With our audio hardware configured and mapped correctly within Audition, we can now begin recording and editing sound. So the first thing I want to do is to create a new audio file. Going up to my Files panel up here, notice we've got a little box, or icon rather, to create a new file. And if I click on this, I can choose from a new multitrack session, a new audio file, and a new CD layout. So we'll see all of these eventually in this course, but for now, I want to choose a new audio file. Here is the new audio file dialog. We can give this a name. I'm going to name it Lamb for reasons which will become immediately apparent when I start recording. And we can choose the sample rate. I like to record at 4800, but 441 is also pretty good if you want something comparable to CD quality. The sample rate for digital audio indicates the rate at which the sampling occurs. So the higher the sample rate, the more data you're going to have to work with. For channels, you can choose from mono, stereo, or 5.1. Since I've configured my hardware to be stereo with left and right, I'm going to keep it at stereo. And for bit depth, you've got choices between 8, 16, 24, and 32. I'm going to keep this at 16. Bit depth determines with each sample that's taken, exactly how much data is sampled during that sample. 16 is a good one to go with. Go ahead and hit OK. And there we go. We've got a number of new things to look at inside of Audition now. For one thing, we've got our little LAM file showing up here. We can see that we have our sample rate, channels, and bit depth applied. It has no duration yet because it is an empty audio file. We can see this easily within our editor panel. If we look at the properties panel, we get a lot of that same information right here. The first thing I like to do before I even start thinking about recording anything is to monitor my levels. So let's pop down here to focus on the levels panel. Notice there's nothing going on right now. What I'm going to do is right click and choose to meter my input signal. Now that I've done that, you can see that indeed everything is being metered. So my audio is pretty pronounced. It's going between negative six and negative nine. Generally for audio, you want to be somewhere between negative six and negative nine, just like this. If it gets up here too high, you have a risk of clipping. Clipping digital audio is going to distort your audio, so you definitely don't want that. If you see a little bit of red showing up here, but it's not showing up here towards zero and negative three, you're probably safe. I've got this pretty hot right now, so it's going around negative three and six when I have louder words. We also want to take advantage of this and look at this part of the levels. So what is the softest part that we have? You can see when I stop talking, nothing's even registering here. And that's exactly what we want. This means we have a nice, clean signal. Now, my environment's configured so that I do have a nice clean signal, and I've got a ton of hardware attached to this microphone that allows me to make this happen. However, if you're doing this in a busy classroom or a normal um, you know, household setting or something like that, you're probably going to see your noise floor around here. So somewhere between negative 50 and negative 40. Don't worry too much about it. We're going to see how to clean up audio, even if you have a bit of a noise floor, using uh, different techniques and effects inside of Audition in a little bit. Now that I've verified my levels are good, I can start recording. So here is our record button. And once I click this, I'm going to recite Mary Had a Little Lamb. Mary had a little lamb. Its fleece was white as snow. 
And everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. We click on stop in order to stop the playback. Now, you might be wondering in this case why we have such a bit of space at the beginning and such a bit of space at the end. The reason for that is because I like to include long pauses. It helps us to trim things down later on. We are able to sample just the dead space when we sample our audio, and we can use that to our advantage if we do things like noise removal. It doesn't hurt anything to have leading or trailing dead space around your recording. In fact, I would say about two seconds on each end is perfect. It's also okay to have more pronounced pauses between different bits of your audio if you need to. So we can see some of these pauses in the waveform here. And down below in selection and view, we can see that the selection itself is about one second of pause. These can be trimmed down and adjusted as needed. However, if you have words that are sort of jumbling and flowing together, you're not going to be able to edit them nearly as cleanly. So it's really worth it to use pauses to your advantage when recording. The last thing we need to do before moving on is to save this. So I'm going to choose File, Save, and here's the Save As dialog. I'm going to name this lamb.wave. I'll save it to a project folder on my desktop. You can save it, of course, wherever you like. And for format, I'm choosing Wave PCM because this on Windows 10 right here, the system that I'm on, this is going to give me great quality. Um, it's going to preserve a lot of the data that I have in here. Of course, if you're on Mac OS, you could choose something like AIFF. Um, you probably aren't going to have Wave as an option, but these two are generally considered um, nice raw audio files to work with. You can see Wave uncompressed. There's no compression going on, no loss of data. Note too, that we're including any markers or other metadata. This is up to you. You can always untick this if you want, but since we're gonna be working in audition with this, these are addition markers and metadata that we're dealing with. So we're gonna preserve those. And all I need to do is hit okay. <laughs> 